G'day friends and foes, RJ here with RJ's This Is Not Legal Advice and Nor Is It. So this is episode 152 I think I put, maybe 151, but I'm still trying to sort out the numbers with my previous video, so I have to leave some little gaps here and there. But anyway, uh, here we are at Tigan Park, or have you pronounce it. At Waterford West, there's a big lagoon here, there's a little ship for people to go on, and I've been invited to uh, a common law assembly, so it has started already, so I will get back to where they are, just had to pop something in my car, and I'll shut up and, you know, let you all hear what's happening. So... under a charter issued by the authority of the Commonwealth of Australia. The original signatories to this charter shall assume no guaranteed role or privilege within the Assembly unless thus delegated and elected to a position by the people in the Assembly. Article 7 is adjunct bodies. Either the Assembly as a whole or the executive body shall have the power to create the following officers and bodies under the authority and the Assembly of this Constitution. One. A citizen's militia to safeguard, and the safe, uh, safeguard the safety and liberty of the assembly and the community as a whole. Two, a sheriff or sheriff such as me, Jonathan and Ryle, um, and staff of deputies to provide security to the assembly and to raise and train the citizen's militia. And sorry, Michael left you out of that sheriff thing there. <laughs> um, number three is the local common law courts. Number four, the official delegates to represent the assembly and the local community within a wider Commonwealth Congress. Number five, local Commonwealth banks or credit unions to safeguard the wealth of the community. Six, land trusts and cooperative rural communities. Seven, any other body required for the well-being of the assembly and the people. Article eight, limitations. Neither the assembly nor its executive nor any adjunct body shall enact any legislation, regulation or course of action that is contrary either to this constitution or to the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act 1901 and its common law. The executive of this assembly shall have no veto or nullification power over the decisions of the assembly unless those decisions violate the terms of this constitution. Article 9, the term of office. The convener of the assembly shall have a term of office of one year and may not serve more than three consecutive terms. The corresponding secretary and other executive positions shall operate for terms of office established by the Assembly. All Assembly sheriffs shall be elected for a term of office of at least one year up to a limited time that is decided on by the Assembly, but should not exceed five years. Article 10, Amendments. This constitution may be amended by a vote of three quarters or 75% of the members of the Assembly uh, provided these amendments do not violate the Constitution and the Common Law of the Commonwealth, um, or the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act 1901. All right, done. Awesome. Um, so, as I stated before, um, I'll just go around and ask everyone, you know, basically their reasons for coming here um, and, and what they hope to gain by by attending one of these assemblies. Um, Yep. You might want to lay out some rules also for the meetings, you know, because I've been to some meetings where it gets a bit rowdy and the convener doesn't take control. So. Ah, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, I might, um, after all, yeah, we might get a vote on some rules then as well. Not um, necessarily, well, it's just common rules of common sense and common law, common decency. Oh, yeah. You know. Okay, yeah, it's basically we like speaking it. outside your, um, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So if somebody wants to speak, hand up, wait until the speaker is finished. Yep. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just good manners. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. That's a, that's a good point, Mike. Yeah. Cheers. Um, yeah, well, everyone basically heard that one. Um, yeah, if you just have any questions while someone's speaking, you know, just put your hand up and, and wait. Uh, we will come to you. Um, no sort of, you know, yelling out and, um, and just being rude. You know, we're all, um, we're all people. We should all, um, all act like people, not animals. Um, yeah, is there any 
any roads that you can think of to... Uh, that's yep. Yeah, yeah awesome. Okay. So um, it's your job to keep order on the meeting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Not a problem. Yeah, as I said before, this is one of our first assemblies that we've held here. Um, you know, I am a bit nervous and, and everything like that, so I might stumble on my words. And, it's all good. And all that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's been good, mate. You've been good. Yeah, cheers, mate. Oh, well. All right. Um, would anyone like to start with, um, you know, why, why they decided to come here? Sure. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, Vince uh, from the Play Island, uh, basically here as observers. Yep. Um, with Mike graciously um, graced us with his presence on uh, Friday and Saturday night and has outlined uh, a lot of things regarding the governance of this country, Yep. Um, which is quite frightening. I have heard of some of those things before, but um, it's, it's quite good to hear them in such a succinct yeah. and powerful way. Um, Pretty well, I'm just not happy with the way the world is going in general. There's a lot of alarming things, a few, you know, that I'm sure that we're all aware of. And basically, the, the upshot of that is the diminution of our freedoms and personal rights. And to me, that's absolutely frightening. And uh, I would like to find a, a tool or a series of tools where we could, um, you know, alleviate that, stop that. Yeah. So that's my reason. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, no better reason, really. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, anyone else got anything really different to, to that at all? Yep. So I'm RJ. Everyone, I did say hello to everyone, I think. Uh, so I was invited here and thought, you know, uh, well, there's different levels of being here, if that makes sense. One, to see what's happening, what can be done. Uh, you know, perhaps I can offer some kind of legal knowledge uh, perhaps I do have a Juris Doctorate Law degree I'm not uh, yet a lawyer uh, I should have been qualified uh, last year but with this COVID scam stuff then that made a lot of problems uh, some of you may know that I've been going around uh, Brisbane and uh, Logan trying to get a COVID fine to accelerate my COVID court case uh, I argue even with the statute law that the COVID directions are no law at all. So you have section uh, 47 of the Statutory Instruments Act for an example, and that says that if there is exempted subordinate legislation, which uh, COVID directions are, so that's uh, legislation or regulations that have not been made by the parliamentary committee, then they must be gazetted for them to have any force. Yet we have, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, presumably, uh, of fines and people being locked up and people's business destroyed, uh, you know, that being the billions of dollars worth of lost economic activity. Yet uh, the commissioner of police already knows about that because you know, I am suing some police and the chief health officer already knows about that and the state of uh, Queensland uh, via my court cases that have been ongoing since uh, May 29th, I think was the first time in court. Then it went from the magistrate's court to the district court. Now it's before the Supreme Court's Court of Appeal and that won't be heard until the 24th of May. If I win that, they'll just send it back down to the district court. So to try and speed things up, then I was actively trying to get, you know, a COVID direction fine. Okay. But uh, I've had interactions with police over it and they won't find me. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, um, as for those um, those COVID restrictions, um, I, I believe Mike and, and the Sunshine Coast and um, Sam in the, in the Brisbane um, assemblies have set up uh, COVID bylaws, um, basically you know, outlining a lot of those um, a lot of those facts where you know, all these restrictions that they're putting in place and calling them laws are not laws, yeah. and they've got no right to uphold it. Um, especially when there are acts, you know, in place that state they're not allowed to, like especially with these, you know, wearings of the mask. Yeah. Um, that's under the, how is it, the, the Biosecurity Act, or Section 477. Um, they're, they're not allowed, you know, the public um, the health official is not allowed to um, to enforce us to vaccinate, to medicate, to wear specific things, i.e. masks, clothing, anything like that, you know, and it's, um, I actually had a, a talk with a fellow in the bank the other day, he wouldn't let me in for not wearing a mask. And, um, He's turned around and he's like, oh, but it's law, we've, we've got to enforce it. Yep. It's actually in the Constitution, Section 51, Subsection 23A. Yep. We did a, a referendum in 1946. Yep. And we allow the government to provide medical and dental services, 
but not so as to force us. Yes. Yeah, so that's correct. They're acting unconstitutionally. Yep. I thought Mike was talking about that section here. So we've got oh, a yep. piece of papers, but then anyone wants to appear. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mine, yeah, we've also got um, uh, copies of the, the um, Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act 1901 on the website. It's um, the free download. Yeah, if anyone needs a copy of that, you might be interested in that. All oh, right. Those mask medals. Ah, yeah, I've seen a few of these. Yeah, it's good to see one that's actually from the Queensland government and not the Victoria government. It goes old hand around the one from the Victoria government. <laughs> They're like, oh, this is Victoria, that's not... Oh, here we go. You've even got a, an actual card. Yeah, I made it. <laughs> Place mark is an exemption card with the referendum 1946 on the back. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, mate. Go make one. That's good, yeah. That's yeah, that, that's idea. golden. Yeah. yeah. I can, um, it, it might be handy to, to see if we can get a hold of an actual card maker so that we can make actual cards, like pla hard plastic cards yeah. like that. That Yeah, that'd be good. Unreal. So if you've got a laminator, you do what I do. Yeah. yeah, unreal. Have you had any issues with it? No. No? <laughs> all, all of these people here are from Maclay Island and they were shocked when I walked onto the ferry on Friday. Yep. No mask. Yep. I walked off. No mask. <laughs> And, uh, in fact, I asked the guy as I was leaving, how do I pay? And he said, oh, you're wearing a sheriff's uh, badge. Off yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unreal. Awesome. And uh, yeah. so all, today, we all walked onto the ferry, no mask on at all. No yeah. problem. Nobody bothered us. Yeah, awesome. You should have given him a card. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of people looked at us, but we don't yeah. care. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, awesome. Has, has anyone seen... Sort of these that have been going around social media. Um, no, I might even just pass it around so you can all have a look. It's basically outlining the laws that and um, like the, the act statutes that, that are in place um, to stop the government from doing all of this, um, to stop them enforcing this. And you now, like I said to that banker who tried to tell me it was law, and even tried to tell me that he studied law and he knows what law is. I was like, well, surely you would understand that if Parliament's not sitting, they can't pass laws, can they? And it's like in every video you see on TV of Anastasia Palaget saying, um, you know, we ask you to wear masks in this time to stop the spread and everything, and you must wear it in these places and you must wear it at these times. It's like she's, you know, it's a request. It's like she's asking us. It's like basically as a favour, if we can do this, we've got the right to decline that. That's not law. It's, yeah, just absolutely, yeah. It's amazing the, the level of, um, of, mindset that these business owners have like you know i understand that they've gone through harsh times recently with all the shutdowns and and everything like that you know it's like but to try to enforce this on potential customers that can bring them more money and you know potentially lose them more money like yeah lose them business is just phenomenal so i was told that they'd be fine twelve thousand dollars does anyone know if that's correct or not Okay. Yeah, yeah, they probably will get the fine. They get fined by the government. That's what we're we doing. Yeah. How yeah, can they do that though? Yeah, but they can't. If, if they actually fought that in court, it would be like all the fines down in um, Victoria with the first lockdown of not wearing masks and, and not complying with all of that. Um, every single person that fought that got off because there was no, they can't hold up in court. So basically it's just nothing but a scare tactic and an, um, an abuse of their authority to yeah to intimidate those to, to do what they want. It's just nothing but control. That's in my opinion and going by what we see around it's it's kind of hard to rebut that statement. It's yeah, it's just absolutely shocking. Yeah, and um, that, that's actually one of the reasons why I, I wanted to start this assembly. And um, oh sorry, did you have a, did you have a question or oh, no? no. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start this assembly is just to get the people aware that we don't have to abide by these um, these rules and regulations that aren't laws. You know, everyone's just acting above their authority that's given to them by our constitution. Um, and you know, and the fact that we can see that they're trying to eradicate common law altogether and just completely ignore it, ignore the constitution, everything like that, is just outstanding. It's like, yeah, yep. Uh, I don't know whether you're aware. government actually chose the governor's general, therefore making all laws after that not about yep. yeah. yep. 
Yeah, isn't it um, another name from as well, the uh, Queen of Australia? Yeah. yeah. Something like that to be able to, you know, it's like so their way of, of going by the constitution. It's like, oh yeah, well this was, uh, you know, um, ascended in, in the Queen's name. And it's like, not the Queen of England, it's not. It's like, <laughs> yeah, not an actual monarchy. That's just someone you've made up to, to try to pass this all on, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because um, I was looking at the police oath last night because the website and um, the police oath in Australia, um, they take the oath but they, it's not, they're not what they, instead of saying uh, that they're liable to the Queen of England's law, yep. um, they actually use the word our sovereign lady, the Queen. Yeah. So, it, it's bit, yeah, it's just wording, isn't it? It's just, yeah, it yeah, is. just, just, just mirrors yeah. and smoke and mirrors with, yeah. with words, yeah. Yeah, and I've noticed that they don't um, they don't swear to uphold constitutional law or anything or, or anything like that. You know, and if, if, um, I actually went into the, the local police headquarters with um, with my phone videotaping it because um, I had evidence of treason on my phone, and um, the library would not let me print it out because um, I was because I refused to, to follow their contact tracing, and um, they'd actually called the police and, and took me out of the library. Um, so I went straight down to the police station and said, look, I've actually got evidence on my phone of, um, of treason. And um, so I can see that you've got uh, a printer behind you, as I can see a little Wi-Fi symbol on it. Do you mind if I just quickly connect to that? I'll print it out for you and you can investigate it as you will. He's like, but, you know, I've just got to give it to you. And he's like, oh, if it's on your phone, why don't you just give me the phone? Really? <laughs> like, nah, mate, nah. We're like, for one, I'm filming you all with this. On, I don't have to give you my phone. And it's like, but, um, you know, it's like, the only reason why I'm here doing this is because I've got, a, it's in the Constitution that any, you know, um, any law or anything like that that's broken or any act in the Constitution that's broken, I've got to report it to my closest police station, and like, which is exactly what I'm trying to do. And um, I was like, that's the only reason why I'm here. Otherwise, I'd be, you know, out playing with the kids and, and living my life. And um, he basically told me to go buy my own printer and print it out to deliver it to them. And I was like, well, hang on a sec. Don't you guys swear an oath to uphold constitutional law and everybody refused to answer that question they just ignored it so i asked for their um the highest ranking officer in the station the sergeant came down and i asked him and he said we don't have to answer that question but in that in the meantime um another officer had actually walked into the foyer and um he heard my question and he just turned around and goes yeah yeah we do and oh, did he get a scaling but um I, I was like well okay fair enough so if you guys swearing oath to uphold constitutional law and I'm trying to uphold my constitutional duty by delivering you this um, of this proof then aren't you impeding my right to my constitutional duty which I believe is sedition at common law of full assets stripping in life in prison and I was like and not only um, not only that but to do so you're actually committing perjury by going against your oath and I said now seeing as I've said that I've got evidence of treason on my phone the only thing I can think of that you guys are willing to commit perjury and sedition and risk losing everything you've worked for end up in, um, and end up in a federal prison for life is that you have committed treason yourself and you're fearful that I've got evidence against you on here. <laughs> and he did not know what to say. He's just, oh, oh, yeah, 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 whatever, mate. It's like, just get out, just get out. And I was like, yes, 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 whatever. It's like, mate, to me, that's three admissions of, um, of guilt to those three, um, the three very heinous crimes. And uh, that's all I need, mate. Cheers for that. See you later. And then I walked out of there. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I went straight to um, to Sheriff um, at John's uh, house straight away. He was like literally two minutes away from the police station, um, and he was two minutes through that video when all of a sudden he cut out and said, "Unable to play video." Every single video I made in that police station, in the council, in the library, is unable to play. Ah. Now that's directly filming it from my phone, going into my phone to try to watch it, and it's saying unable to play. Every other video plays except for that which has got me questioning what sort of you know devices do they have that is able to to do this so straight away i've taken my sd card out if anyone's an it expert and is able to yeah i'll give you the sd that i've got yeah maybe next time live stream it yeah yeah i didn't even think of that yeah <coughs> And download yeah. it straight away. Yeah. <laughs> before that disappears. So since then, I've sort of started pushing, um, pushing the boundaries. Before I found out about common law and and everything like that, you know, I just read the constitution. Found out that I've got rights. Well, hang on. Here we go. Then I read um, an interesting section. Um, sort of probably really hard to read. Here we go. Stating that you know, laws shall not approach. Come on, what's another thing? I can have another one. Oh, I've got that one. I'll never show you that again. Thank you.
This no, comes from Victoria. Yeah, no, someone just wanted to know what it says on this. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to look at this one too? Which is how they claim of why we need to pay registration in the first place. Do you want to look at that but if that's the case, then what about the 40% of your legislation of your website? So we've got for exactly the same thing. You know, it's like when we go and pay fuel, we pay 10% GST on that fuel, right? So in amongst all that, they've got 40, 40 cents of that gets taken out for the government for a fuel excise. But there's 10% GST added on to that 40 cents oh, that 40 cents as well. So there's two lots of GST that we're paying as one product. That's completely unlawful going by their own you know, I don't see how there can be one rule for them and another rule for us. It's just completely wrong. And I'm the one who just sit the bedroom. she resigned she didn't have to go to court because apparently she can't get tried per, like as a person for her crimes it's to the office and so so basically they've got a free reign to do what they want without fear of persecution and i for one do not agree with that and um you know, the only way i can really see is how we can enforce the laws onto them is by a common law assembly and by doing it that way yes mike yeah on the common law we don't we don't ever uh, put a In personam, hey. in personam, as in to the person himself. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, so you can see exactly what's happening now with all these, um, you know, with no fear of getting persecuted for their crimes. Just exactly what they're willing to get away with, and how far they're willing to push it with all the rights and privileges they've got. You know, and they're making us do this. It's just phenomenal. Um, yeah. Uh, 
So I did have a whole thing of what I was meant to be doing today. Um, yeah, yeah, so um, that we need, as per the constitution, we need a, um, a secretary and, and all of that to help administer this, this assembly. Um, does anyone, you know, feel like they'd uh, have the qualifications or just the, you know, um, like would feel like they would want to, to sort of help out and, and volunteer to, to be the secretary of this assembly? It has to be someone of Logan because we're going to have a long assembly on the way we have our functions. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, you'd like to do it? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. No problem. Um, so, yeah, um, you might want to introduce yourself and, and um, explain why you'd like to, to play that role. Yeah, stand up, mate. Uh, names are Dakota. Honestly, I just kind of wanted to come just get all this information. I, I like information. I like shrooms. And um, what better way to find it than with people that are not blinded by the system we're in? Yes. Mainly the main reason for me is one info. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So um so did you want to play the role of, of the secretary yeah. yourself or sure, what's that entail? Yeah. Um so Okay, so with the secretary, secretary keeps the minutes of the assembly meetings, uh, maintains a membership and a contact list, and corresponds with other assemblies and within the Common Law Assembly Central Office. Um, so basically, it's just you know, um, any of the paperwork that, that we've got here, you just keep a record of it, make sure it doesn't get lost, and, and um, you know, when you need to. Yep. Okay, what I'll do there, as I'm doing for the play island people, yep. uh, you need to set up an account now uh, in Mailchimp. Yep. I will set up the, then you send me the login and I'll set up a, a form, registration form. Yep. I'll put that on the website on a page for the Logan um, Assembly. So that, and all the emails will go to you. Alright. As the cool. secretary. Yeah. Oh no, who's the convener? You're the convener. Yeah, I'm the convener. All the emails yeah. will go to you. Yep. So you can manage the, um, the, the written registrations. Yep. And then when you've taken the minutes of the meeting, yeah. you send them to me and I will put them on the page. On the registration page so that anybody who comes to register can see what happened at the previous meeting. Yep. Now after each meeting I then make a separate page and put the, the previous meeting uh, minutes on there and the next the, the, the current meeting can go on the page instead. So that way you've got a permanent record of what's going on and everybody can uh, keep track. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Cheers mate. Alright, um, so how many people do we actually have here from like the Brisbane South and Logan, um, Logan area? Yeah? Alright, awesome. Um, so another... So can I ask a question? Yep. Can you tell us what your qualifications are to be a secretary? <laughs> well, we need somebody who's capable, you see. Yeah, yeah. Definitely haven't, so. <laughs> so what you need to do is to take note of each topic that's covered in the meeting yeah. and then write up a report at the end of it and then you send that in to the convener and myself and I will publish it yeah. and then that goes into the minutes for the next meeting. Right. So the next meeting, you read the previous meeting of minutes that I passed the assembly, have we all read the minutes, have we all approved?
tips and all of this. Yeah. Um, I don't see why we can't, you know, just work together to, to build up schools and everything like that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. If if everyone would be happy to um, to, to vote in Dakota for, um, you know, I think that, you know, with with some training and all that, he'd make a good secretary for, for the assembly. Um, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. All right. All those opposed. Thank you. Congratulations, mate. We'll meet up after this and we'll have stuff and, and all that, yeah. Alright. Um, and as for the treasurer, um, anyone from the Logan area would like to nominate themselves as wanting to be the treasurer? Probably. <laughs> yeah. I'm helping. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want the watch, so... Yeah, no, that's right, but, um, yep. yeah, Everything. we can appoint yep. one of those next time. Here we go, yeah. here we go. Oh, yeah, you got one? Yep. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Um, just want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, and, and why you would pick the role of the treasurer. fishing buckets, yep. something like that, yeah. big sign on it, donations, and now that money then goes to the treasurer and you need to appoint two other people who are going to be on the treasury um, team, yep. and you go down to the bank and you set up a bank account in the name of the assembly, actually in the name of the three people, yep. and they are accountable back to the assembly, oh, so, yeah. and each time that you have a meeting, the treasurer must present the financial report, yep. how much is in the bank, how much has been spent, how much has been taken. So we always know exactly how much is there. Yeah. We yeah. keep each other honest by having three of us. Yeah, yeah too easy. Um, I think after after all this, we might have to, to organise a, a day where we can all sort of just sit down and, and go all there together if you're okay with that. Yeah, no worries, mate. Yeah. Awesome. Not a problem. Can I just say something? Yeah, yeah, Treasure, go Treasurer, do you know how to do a ledger? A ledger spreadsheet? Sure. Yep. 
because it's not like, you know, oh, we, we want to. Yeah. It's going to be, we need. Yep. You know, we need stationary for my feet. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. I've bought, you know, four, so you basically need to go to office works and go, four rings of paper is going to be X. Yep. Is everyone happy if I purchase that? And you vote on that. Yep. Once it's voted, then you go and purchase your stationery. Yeah. So then the next time you have a meeting, you can say, the $20 I spent on stationery, here's the receipt, here's the ledger. And then everyone goes, yep, it all equals, it all balances. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Mm. Okay. Um, People from yeah, the yeah. Um, okay. Uh, How many sheriffs you got here? Pardon? How many sheriffs are there? Uh, there's four sheriffs, including yourself. Uh, no, I'm not part of that sheriff group. Yeah. So you've got three sheriffs in Logan? Yes. Yeah, well, as you go, you probably need to report more. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. What sort of training are you doing? Um, so, um, Sheriff 007, oh, Jonathan, um, yep. he's agreed to do some. Um, um, self-defense training, um, he's got training. all of his certificates and, and everything like that. Um, and not only that, but uh, we've got the, the Sheriff's Handbook and everything will sit down and sort of educate, you know, uh, anyone who wants to be a Sheriff, yeah, we can educate them on, you know, basically what we do, um, the, the Code of Ethics and, and everything else like that, um, yeah, basically what their authority is and, and making sure that they don't out, you know, outstep that, otherwise we're just no, yeah, no better than, than the police that are in, um, in place today. Um, yeah. Um, put blank now, I don't... Oh, my blank. And a bailiff. Hey? And a bailiff. Um, we might do all that when we've got more, yeah, we need more people from Logan to be able to do that, yeah. Um, there'll be an education committee coordinator, um, an action committee coordinator, and then we'll go with the judicial and, and legal coordinators. Um, yeah, I definitely think that that'll be for, for a later time once we grow a bit more. Um, has anyone got any questions at all, or? No? Well, I'll make a comment. So far, very good. It's, you're taking it one step at a time and, and then moving at the right pace. Yeah, cheers. Keep doing that, mate. You're doing well. Yeah, thank you. Well done. Yeah, cheers. Uh, including for the viewers, how often are you going to have meetings? Like once a month? Once yeah, a once a month. Yep. Um, if it's okay with everyone, um, I'd like to hold them as the last Sunday of every month. Yep. Um, so on the website there, uh, like you would have noticed when you registered, um, you sort of put your name and, and um, email address and all of that in. Um, you would have received an email then straight away with uh, the, the date, location and everything of the assembly. Um, there, I'm going to talk to, to Mike and um, sort of see how we can set that up for, for the Logan and everything so I don't have to keep sort of going back and forwards with him and um, yeah you know he's sure he's got more important things to do than <laughs> yeah than to um, sort of let basically let me pick it back off him and um, yeah. Yeah. and is it likely to be in the same location every month or are you going to rove around the area like in a geographical space so like next time it might be in Woodridge and then it might be in wherever yeah, um, I hadn't really thought about that. Um, yep. I had thought of just sort of keeping it here for now to um, uh, until the numbers sort of start yep. getting up. Um, and then, you know, well, once the numbers do start getting up and sort of we all get sick of um, either sitting on camping chairs or something like that, we'd like to do it in an actual, um, uh, in a hall or something like that. Well, then, then, too. Yeah, sure. then we can vote all on that. Do it there in Kingston. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll just put it to the assembly and vote on it. Okay, and we're also, like I'm trying to, you know, let the viewers know or whatever yeah. as well. So would it be the same time every month and uh, like 2 p.m. every month? Yeah. Just so people know, hey, look, Sunday coming up, last Sunday of the month, 2 p.m., it'll be somewhere around here. Yeah, yeah, well, once we get a bit more, um, yeah, a bit more people from, from the Logan area who um, who are going to come a lot more often and, yeah, and then everything like that, then, um, yeah. But yeah, look, I'm going to put it towards, um, like, put it to them and... Um, now find out what even what Sunday they uh, would suit everyone best, or even a yep. Saturday, or, yep, no or something like that, and the dates and times. Yeah, we'll just let it up be up to the people instead of us telling them. Yep, no worries. Yeah, that, Thank that's you. Eventually, how I'd like it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions? No. All right. Well. Um, yeah. All right. I might um, call that uh, it then. Sorry, I do have a question from a viewer. Yep. What does a sheriff do? 
So the sheriff um, basically keeps the peace and order in the community. Um, you know, if uh, like we actually get um, either phone calls, we've got a we, we do have a, a sheriff's number that is on the um, on the website. Yep. Um, I will be getting up uh, like um, getting another one just for for the Logan area. Yep. Um, you know, if you have any discrepancies, if you have any um, any issues or anything like that, especially with um, you know say police are at your door and you know trying to force their way in and, and you don't really feel safe or something like that and you'd like someone there make feel free to give us a call we'll come and stand next to you that's yeah. not a problem we'll make sure they're working within their authority um and they're not stepping outside those boundaries and making sure that you know they actually are being peace officers um and not just revenue collectors yep and what's the website please um yeah the website um is commonlawcourtoz.org um, .org. um got a card here you can hold up and check that out yep and uh, another person asks are you currently in Sydney as well like with a assembly or common law court or um, actually I don't think we do have an assembly in Sydney yet um, yeah I, I have been speaking to a couple of people down around that area and um, and more northern New South Wales who um, have contacted me you know, basically stating you know it's like um, they they need an assembly down there just with everything that's going on yeah and um, yeah so we're actually talking with them at the moment like we're, we're getting set up everywhere. I know that there's a couple in Western Australia now. Um, South Australia. Uh, is there yeah, one in Victoria yet? Victoria, yeah. I think that's coming. Yeah, yeah, there's even one in Victoria coming. Um, yeah, look, it's um, if you get onto the website and have a look under the assembly section, you'll see yep. where we are. Yeah. And um, it'll also give you all the information on how you should start one yourselves. Yep. And um, yeah, which is basically what I did to, to start this one. Yep, no worries. Yeah. Okay, all thank right, you. To the viewers out there, does anyone else have any more questions? Any more questions, anyone? Uh, so if you go on their website and sign up, then obviously they'll start to get like a map of, you know, there's so many people in this area, so it's enough uh, people to, you know, open up a little, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, like a seat or something, if it's a common law assembly or... Yeah, yeah, well, like, uh, to, to put it this way, um, like, you know, with, with Mike's first assembly, it was around his kitchen table with about six people. Yep. Um, you know, and it's grown up, well, he's got nearly a few hundred, um, red, like, yeah, uh, Oh, okay, and how long ago was that? Uh, last year. Yeah, so, uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So when people start signing up and then, you know, they bring their friends along, then, you know, it yeah. grows and grows and grows. Yeah, that's it. And um, one thing that I can say that um, that I actually do like about all these, um, like, you know, what the government is doing is that they're actually digging themselves a bigger hole and, you know, making people research their authority and, and everything that's going on. And um, it's actually helping our cause a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the more people, like this is a numbers game, um, but the more people we get, the, the easier it is to enforce it all. Um, you know, like to put it this way, in Queensland alone, I know for a fact that there's only about 5,000 police officers in all of Queensland with 333 police stations. Now, wow. if you take how many people we've actually got here in Logan, you know, there's a lot more than 5,000 people in Logan. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, uh, if I remember as a kid watching a movie called A Bug's Life. And it's oh. got a grasshopper there, and he's uh, you know talking to his um, all his other grasshoppers that are trying to go in and take their food or tax, if you will, um, for them to live and and everything like that. You know he um, he makes a very good point where you know they uh, those ants us um, outnumber them a hundred to one, and if we ever figure that out, there goes their way of life. And it's like well the people are starting to figure that out now, you know. And it's like we do outnumber them a hundred to one. Um, all I can really say is that you know, once we've got the numbers there, it'll be a lot easier for us to hold our ground, to not be intimidated by uh, basically these thugs and, and bush rangers, if you will, according to the 1837 Bush Rangers Act, uh, which is exactly what they are. You know, they're armed, they're in a group of more than three, and they're um, acting above their authority and trying to extort us out of our hard-earned money, yep. um, yeah, without the consent of us. It's, yeah, and uh, then also, so what is a summary of the point of the common law assembly so is it basically to uh, again you know i'm trying to yeah. engage with fuels and whatever yep. but is it to ensure that the government does comply with the law does not act outside of its authority etc yeah 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 well once we get set up fully um you know like in australia like you know there's more and more assemblies popping up all the time now um because people are just sick of it um yeah it's basically so with this assembly for the Logan area, anyone who registers to come here and, and you know or lives in the Logan area, um, like we've got a, a section, a record section on the website where you can record your life birth, everything like that. Basically, get yourself out of the jurisdiction um, of maritime law that they're using. 
um, and put it under the, the common law, which is what our constitution is written under. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah that might be good. sure. <laughs> I just need closely because the microphones. What is the purpose of a common law assembly? Is yep. to unite the people uh, uh, under a charter, which we've already heard, and they will then all agree to work under common law, uphold the law, and it becomes a lawful local government. With all the powers of local government, we can pass bylaws, we can elect sheriffs, we can convene common law courts, we can convene a um, citizen militia to protect them and serve this community. So it's like a local government. Are we trying to make the current government work according to the law? No, we're not interested because they're not in our system. They don't follow common law. They are following uh, uh, admiralty law, which is actually Roman law under the Pope. So it's not our law. And they have taken themselves out of our system by taking the Queen out of the Constitution and registering two copies of our, our Constitution to a private corporation registered in America. Now there's a lot more to that, but if you go onto the website under education, you will see there the top, in, um, the top article. Uh, there's a video in there that explains it very clearly. It's about an 18 minute video. And also, uh, if you want to volunteer to start an assembly anywhere in Australia, go onto the website under Activate, and there is a link there to uh, volunteer to set up an assembly. Just fill that in, and what I do there is I bring them all, all the people together, I, I, you know, depending on what area you are in, and then I send an email out to all those people saying, this is to introduce you all, and get together and do it. Yep. And there are two things in common law, two laws. First, do no harm to others. Secondly, take responsibility for your own actions. That's it. Yep, no worries. And uh, for the viewers, I just wrote your website to common law court on story. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, cheers, Mike. All right. Okay, well, I think that um, just about does it for, for this assembly. Um, thank you all so much for coming. Um, yeah, it's been great. I hope uh, you, know, you guys in um, on the Flea Island and, and all that, you sort of get a rough idea on, you know, on basically what um, what we're all for. And, and Thank yeah, you, it's been very educational. Yeah, thank you. All right. Good work. Cheers, guys. Good work. Thank you. So just go for a little walk and just summarise. So the Common Law Assembly is associated with the Common Law Courts, uh, as they're called. Uh, so you've got the website, just make sure I get it right, commonlawcourtoz.org. So there's a little tag. Uh, when you come here, uh, you just sign in so they know how many people are there and also uh, because, you know, they're doing secretarial services, that kind of thing, like a normal organisation would. You know, you've got to know that 50 people attended on XYZ date and the minutes are explaining what happened. So today uh, they did an introduction, they read out their uh, little constitution, as in the constitution of the common law courts, and then basically uh, they had the election of two positions, so one was the secretary and the other one was the treasurer. So uh, those people have been elected and they do have other positions, but they are waiting until it's a lot bigger for the local area. So there might be, I don't know, two, four, six, eight, maybe about 17 people here, 18 people. And basically, a lot of the people here are from a different common law assembly uh, in Maclay Island and that includes Mike Holt who I believe uh, is, well I think probably the main common law court person in Australia. You also have uh, Dr Barry, I don't know what he's a doctor of, I do have a previous video uh, with my thoughts about the common law court but you know I was invited down today and maybe some other people are interested in joining and you know uh, running for election or whatnot within the common law court and uh, also the common law assembly that's associated with it then 
There's also uh, Lord Alex, again, what's your Lord of? But uh, my cult in Queensland is, you know, I guess the leader, if there is a leader as such, uh, or at least the most experienced, and happy to help people to set up uh, common law assemblies as well as doing his own thing. Uh, but anyway, so a lot of the people here aren't from the Logan, Logan area. Logan City is a city uh, below Brisbane and north of the Gold Coast City. Uh, and I think there might have been about four or five or six people from Logan here. But obviously when they grow, they will look into the other positions that they uh, said about getting uh, people elected for. I think there was an educational committee, uh, a law committee and a couple other ones. And anyway, so I'll stop the broadcast and go have a further chat to people, you know, just introduce myself to everyone when I first came here. Uh, and my eyes are getting watery from the wind and before that they were sunburnt. And here's some nice little pigeons. If a dove is a white pigeon, then technically is an albino pigeon a dove? Is it a sign of peace? A bit skittish. There's some birdies over there. It's quite a nice park. And uh, one thing I, oops, one thing I did notice. I'm just trying to zoom out. Is there's a car park up the end there, but that was a very small one and filled up quickly. And when I came here, because I got told it was Lagoon Park, uh, which apparently is a local nickname, because obviously it's got a big lagoon here, but. I thought I may have been at the wrong location, but then I drove around to look for a further park and there's got plenty of parking on this side. I'm sure they've, they've got toilet facilities and probably barbecues if there's a barbecue there. So, you know, uh, you can meet some interesting people as well. And I will bugger off with that. I'll do some uh, more videos today later on about hmm, what's the best way to put it i'll do a video on how to find out if people have pending criminal charges that are already before the court so that'll be an interesting one uh, with a couple of special guest names and i'll see what else i do today otherwise i might delay things uh, they are still speaking here so i'll just quickly go back in case it is to do with the assembly itself. Maybe it's just people having a chat, in which case then I'll cut it off. So anyway, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, you can donate some money if you like. Uh, I've got a PayPal account, paypal.me forward slash RJ Martin. If you want to do a personal donation, I do have a court case uh, donation that involves COVID directions. And you can look that up on GoFundMe. But I'll just be quiet now and see if there's any more happening. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's rubbish. It is. Yeah, it's just because they know that they're the ones who are actually going to stand up against them. And you know, without fear of, um, of you know, persecution or you know, even to the point where they put a gun in their face, like, they're not going to back down from them. And that's why they've created all these laws and, and all that. Um, it turns out, I know uh, before all these laws came out, um, there was a, a fair few instances where you know, the police had to get called in and they basically used those instances to bring in these laws. Um, I've, a couple of people that I know um, have even turned, you know, that sort of know all these other people, turned around and said that they basically feel like they got paid to do that. Yeah. Just to, you know, as because of where it was in such public places, everything like that. It's like they wouldn't normally do that as they know these people. You know, it's like the only way they do that is if someone comes to them and say, hey, I'll give you 10 grand if you go and bash this bloke in this cafe. You know, and it's like it's sort of the only way that, that they can really, yeah, see is it happening. And it's like, and who's really going to to do that that's not um, either part of a, uh, another group or you know something like that and that's yeah same reason why we've got no guns at the moment and it's like we all know about the, the Port Arthur massacre and, and everything like that and how you know 
within three days of that happening, all of a sudden the government's got all the paperwork already together in place, ready to pass it, and you know, take away our guns. So like, all of that takes a lot more than three days. Yeah. Like, a lot more than three days. That would have been months of work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they it's that, that plan. 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 Yeah. Plan. like it's actually um, it's funny. I came across um, uh, someone on on some Facebook page. Um, there was a, a quote that had a picture of Hitler, and it had all of uh, one of his quotes um, about propaganda. And it's funny how what his quote was was everything that is happening that we see on TV with the um, with COVID. You know, it's just COVID, 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 pushing it out. You know, so I actually um, decided to go through quotes of Hitler just on, on Google, typed it in. And, um, I was quite surprised when I found one. Um, you know, it's about, uh, you know, if you want complete and utter control, remove the guns. Um, if, you know, then with all the propaganda and everything. But the one that really had me laughing was um, a politician should never be seen in his bathing suit. <laughs> now, I think it's funny how all of these quotes from Hitler back in those days, every single one of them we can put in place in Australia today, even to Tony Abbott being filmed on the beach. Yeah. Like, it's just amazing, you know what I mean? It's just like, wow, like, it even made me question whether that set up, whether he's doing that just as a, you know, basically to throw it in our face and a way to say, look, he's our, basically, he's our idol, this is who we're following, he had the right idea, so we'll do it like that, except a lot slower and a lot more smarter. like um i just see it as proof that you know um this, this is exactly what they're doing and they're doing it in such a manner that if we did you know look up things like what i just looked up it's a way of them telling us that they're doing it so that yeah. we're not actually um being like you know they're yeah they're actually doing the right thing by informing us but just doing it in such a sly way like such movies and and things like that like it's pretty funny how terminator 2 back in the 80s was such a you know, a laughable thing as if that could ever happen and then what five years ago we've got drones and yeah. machines yeah. with weapons and Hollywood's part of it. Yeah, exactly. I'm a big believer in that of what you see. Yeah. 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 It's well, funny it's how getting us used to it. It's yeah. well, funny because when they this COVID thing started, I don't know if you noticed, but all the movies on the pay, on the free T V they're all about bloody as far as I'm concerned, big tech are in cahoots with government to just yeah. destroy yeah. their rights. Yeah. Yeah. Would you hear the latest about Anastasia Palaszczuk's um, father? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the head of the um, the DNA thing in in, in, um, in Australia, and um, like you know, they've come up with a, a trillion dollar idea, and they're all implementing it. It was like when um, when they first decided to bring in these laws about forcing vaccination. Um, I think that was Kevin Rudd, and his wife's the top, the head of one of the pharmaceutical companies that does those vaccinations. It's like, well, hang on a sec. Like, yeah, now we're seeing it with Palaje and her father. We're like, we're just seeing it everywhere.
now. When now we're spending $24 million on advertising for 30 to 35 women. Now, they are the majority of the women who are falling pregnant these days. Exactly. So, we actually have yeah. three daughters in that category. Yep. I just lay here in bed this morning thinking, this can't be real. Yeah. This can't be happening. Yeah, well, that's uh, the Moderna, am I correct? Uh, the Moderna vaccine or something like that? Yeah. Because, um, you know, like I, I'm a nurse, uh, I work at a GP practice, and uh, they're, they're getting ready. Yeah. They're getting ready. They're, like, they sent out like um, an invitation for different um, GP practices and venues to put out submissions to be able to administer the vaccine. So, so they're hoping that, you know, like people are putting out those submissions. They're supposed to be in by January 26th. Yep. After that, we'll know who's going to be administering them, but we still don't know. We, like, I mean, we don't know because the Pfizer vaccine has to be kept at minus 70 degrees. And so we don't even, we don't have the facilities to keep it at that. Yeah. I thought our vaccine company, I thought they were, the Australian government's buying from AstraZeneca. Yes. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. When I did get that, when I did get that, when I did get, when I did read that submission for, so I don't even know how it can be part of the vaccine, like the um, with the mRNA um, technology yeah, yeah, that's in it. Yeah, it should be like technically it should be cast as a device because it does not do what a vaccine does. You know, a vaccine should be administering certain proteins to, um, to exactly. Yeah, and this one does not do that. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, they've got little micro tech micro bots, if you will, of micro technology that can administer that that um you know that certain protein or something like that to, to do all that and to a certain cell to, to help it with that but i mean who's to say that that's actually what it's going to do if that's a technology that means they can be programmed and they can be programmed to do whatever they like like um before i heard that it was coming out in a vaccine i heard the technology um getting administered into us to be able to clean out our arteries to be able to to um you know track down a cancer cell and just destroy it in the body yeah, and it was like basically um, said that, um, uh, what was it, the, um, what I'm looking for, um, immortality is very real and, and is very, very close. And so, you know, that really got me thinking, because especially with that um, that microchip they wanted to put in, um, I don't know if you've heard of ID2020.org. Um, yeah, yeah, it's like they only mention the middle and lower class societies. Why don't they ever mention the upper class societies? Whenever they're talking about the vaccines and forcing the vaccines, they never mention the upper class. They're the ones, ones organising. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, because the, the lower and middle class are more prone to infection, I guess. Like, what, because we're slobs or something? Like, you've got to be kidding me. Because we cook ourselves in money. It's very yeah. antibacterial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's just ridiculous. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, like so. so what, how did your congregation react? What did they say? Um, a lot of them were quiet, but at the same time, like we actually did have a fair few new people to the church today, which um, I found yeah pretty funny. Um, you know, God works in mysterious ways. Well, I'm, I'm a Christian. Um, you know, He works in mysterious ways, and um, yeah, it's like I knew the talk was coming. Um, I didn't realise it'd be so full on as what it was. But um, with how it led up into, you know, everyone could see that what he was speaking was the truth. And it was like, he spoke nothing but facts and like with the slideshows and everything of what the governments have stated is this vaccine and the marks that they're going to be given to show this and, and everything else, you know. And then he's reading the scripture in Revelation to say the mark of the beast and you won't be able to do this. He's like, can you put two and two together? He's like, tell me this is wrong. Tell me I'm rubbish. And he's like, if I'm really rubbish, then what are you doing here reading this? How can you follow this? And how could you, you know, trust God and believe in God if you can't, believe, if you can't even see what's going on around us? And that sort of just had everyone just like, wow. Good. They hadn't heard, they don't yeah. hear it though. No, well that's exactly like, right, it's because we're not allowed to, they're not allowed to preach that stuff. Anyway, so I'll stop the broadcast now, and cheerio everyone. Bye.